So after going through hundreds of claims files during the course of my career, I've identified three things that veterans think are helping their claims, but they're really not. So here they are. Here's the top thing, submitting VA medical records back to the VA. So if you're a veteran who's getting treated at a Veterans Affairs Medical Center or a hospital or a clinic, the VA is gonna have those records already. So instead of going to the hospital that is run by the VA, getting the VA medical records and then resubmitting those back to the VA, when you file a 526 EZ, which is your claim form or supplemental claim, a 0995, just go ahead and note on that form, and there's a space for it too, that you've been seen at a VA medical facility. So folks, stop submitting VA records right back to them. Now, here's a big exception to this, community care. If you want the VA to, if you've been seen outside the VA because you've been referred to a community care facility that's not run by the VA, but maybe he's being paid for by the VA, what you wanna do is you wanna give the VA a 4142A form uh, to request the records from the community care facility, or better yet, and I can't stress this enough, go to that community care facility, get your VA medical records, or get your non-VA medical records from that community care doctor, and then submit those. But again, if it actually came from a VA-run facility itself, you do not have to submit your VA medical records back to the VA because they already have them. And the veteran service representative on the other end of the file can just click three buttons of their mouse and download your VA medical center records right into the file. So again, the only records, medical records you should be submitting back to the VA are things from private treatment facilities not run by the Department of Veterans Affairs themselves. The second thing that veterans think is helping their case, but is really just adding paperwork to the file. Some veterans will go to the Board of Veterans Appeals website and search decisions. And they'll go into those decisions and they'll find decisions that they think are helpful to their case. So they'll print out pages and pages and pages of Board of Veterans Appeals decisions and then upload those into their VA claims file, hoping that, a, that the VA themselves will actually use those in making a determination on their own individual case. Now, let's talk a little bit about Board of Veterans Appeals decisions. They rely heavily on whatever that individual case file is. So if Andy Gross appeals something to the Board of Veterans Appeals, a Board of Veterans Appeals judge and a staff attorney is gonna review my entire claims file and all of the law and come up with a decision. So they're very much weighing the facts of my particular case that might not apply in other cases. So submitting a Board of Veterans Appeals decision to the VA isn't gonna do any good. Now you can use them to sometimes help you understand the law uh, as to maybe how the VA should be making a decision, but that brings me to my next point. Time and time again, I hear VA officials tell me, listen, we're bound by our regulations and our manuals and what the, what the interpretation is at our level as decision review officers and rating veteran service representatives. They will then also say, but hey, listen, the Board of Veterans Appeals, that's a bunch of lawyers and judges. They can do what they want as long as they can justify it under the law. So why do I say this? Well, BVA judges and their teams can do the deep dives into the law and really come up with decisions that maybe aren't, that, that aren't in the purview or or that the decision review officers and the, and the rating veteran service representatives down at the VA can come up with. They just aren't empowered to do that. The judges at the BVA just have a lot more freedom in coming up with decisions. So they're just not that instructive in the process. And finally, the reason why you don't wanna submit a BVA opinion back to the VA itself, there's no mechanism for them to really analyze that down at the VA. The VA employees reviewing your file have to do so quickly. They're looking for medical evidence, they're looking for claim and pension exams, and they're looking for service records, they're looking for lay statements, and quite frankly, they barely have time to look at all that, as we can see in a lot of our decisions. They don't really care about a BVA decision. They're looking to decide your file and decide it quickly, which is why we see a lot of bad decisions, is because they're going through the claims file quickly, they're not necessarily reviewing whether a C&P exam was sufficient for rating purposes. So, a, Adding a BVA decision is just one more document that they're not gonna read, so don't do that. But what you can do is use the BVA decisions to educate yourself on the thought processes of how the VA should be making decisions themselves and whether or not your case was correctly decided. The third thing that veterans think is helping their claim but is really not, which is just submitting previous rating decisions back to them. There's no reason to do that. 
The VA has your previous rating decisions. They keep all these in a system called the Veterans Benefits Management System, or VBMS. When you file a supplemental claim or higher level review, you don't have to submit the decision back with that. All you have to do is note the date of the decision on the 0995 or 0996. Identify the decision that you disagree with and the VA understands that or should understand that. Now, what should you submit with your supplemental claim, higher level review, or Board of Veterans Appeals decision? Well, or appeal. That depends on your individual case. If it's a supplemental claim, depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, and, and that would be too long of a video to make, but you can submit additional evidence and that could be medical evidence. Again, not from the VA, but stuff from outside the VA. It could be lay statements. It could be photographs. It could be a nexus letter if you've chosen to go down that route. It can be a lot of different things. If it's a higher level review, you might just submit an argument. Why the VA made an error on the law or interpreting the facts. That's fine too. The Board of Veterans Appeals, they have their own rules. So again, you don't have to submit a rating decision back to the VA, just creating a duplicate rating decision in the file. They already have that. That's what you're appealing. You just have to identify the date of the decision. And well, I know I only said three things here, but I have a fourth bonus one because this keeps coming up. I'm seeing a lot of advice out there where folks are saying, well, apply for one condition at first and then apply for all your secondary conditions later. I have not had a good explanation as to why that's that's people are doing that. It makes no sense to do it that way. If you have hypertension and you're applying for hypertension and your hypertension has also caused your kidney problems and your frequent urination multiple times a night, apply for it all at once. The VA may deny one or the other, but if you appeal it immediately or within 12 months, you're gonna keep the same effective date. I'm finding that a lot of folks are applying for hypertension, waiting six months for a decision, and then getting hypertension granted at a 0% rate before going on and applying for frequent urination and then waiting another six months, but they've lost out on the prior six months of back pay for their frequent urination. It makes no sense. If you've got a condition and you think there are a lot of secondary conditions related to it, or that condition is causing a lot of other stuff, other problems, apply for it all at once. There's not a reason to wait. Hope that helps. Hope that simple, you know, hey, here's what you think you're doing, but it's not helping. Uh, it helps. If you, if you like this content, drop a comment. I'll try to respond. I do take them seriously. I do take the video suggestions seriously. If you've been denied uh, or underrated on your appeal, feel free to reach out. And until next time, take care.